What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to properly and professionally manage dependencies in Python using pip files. So let us get right into it. All right, so pip files are essentially a modern solution to managing dependencies in Python and they aim to replace the traditional requirements.txt files. And for those of you who don't know what these are, I'm going to give you a brief introduction now. Uh, essentially, when you want to publish something, uh, some Python project, some Python package, you have certain dependencies. So for example, you publish a library that does something with images, maybe it's based on OpenCV. You publish something that works with neural networks, maybe it's based on NumPy, Pandas, uh, maybe on SciPy, something like that. So you have certain dependencies to get your project to work. So you have installed certain packages using pip that the other person that is going to use your repository, your project, uh, also has to install. And instead of just listing them and telling them, hey, you need this, you need this, um, you can provide a so-called requirements.txt file so that they can just say pip install dash r requirements.txt and then they're going to install the packages. So that's a traditional way. Um, it would be done something like that. So you open up your command line. Usually you work in virtual environments. I have a video on that, how to work with virtual environments. Um, and what you can do inside of a virtual environment is you can just say pip freeze to get the installed packages. Now here, I'm not in a virtual environment right now. I have my basic Python installation, so I have a ton of packages installed, which is way too much. This would, uh, this would not be something that you put into a requirements.txt file, but when you work in a virtual environment, maybe you just have six, seven modules installed. And pip freeze gives you the packages that you have installed that are not part of the core Python uh, stack. And you can just go ahead and let me navigate here to, um, to the directory that I'm working in, I can just say pip freeze, and then I can use this greater than uh, or closing bracket, closing angle bracket sign, and I can say requirements.txt. This would take all of this. What did I mistype here? Okay, just two e's, not three. Uh, it would take all these inst uh, installed versions and it would lock them into a requirements.txt file like that. So you can see here all the packages that I have installed with their respective version. And when now another person downloads my repository with that requirements.txt file in it, they can just say pip install dash r requirements.txt and they would get all the versions that I have. This is the traditional way. This is how it's done uh, in a lot of projects. PIP files now aim to improve this process by providing a couple of things. First of all, they provide fully deterministic environments using lock files. So you can just install um, the packages via a lock file and you get the exact same versions because they also have hashes in there. So you don't just get the versions, but you also get a hash to compare the version that you installed to the version that was uh, present when the lock file was created. So you get the exact same package. Um, and this is one advantage. Another advantage is that you don't have to use multiple files because one thing that you can do here or one thing that is done with requirements files is that you provide sometimes a requirements.txt file for everyone, for the user, and then you also provide a def requirements.txt file for the developers where you maybe include some libraries for testing. And instead of using multiple files with pip files, you can use one file and specify multiple sections. So um, we're going to talk about this in today's video. And for that, we need to install uh, a library called pip env. So we, uh, we say pip install pip env. And this is basically the whole environment that is needed for pip files. And we're going to delete now the requirements.txt file to replace it with a simple pip file. So I'm going to open up a new file, capital P, this is important. PIP file with a capital P in the beginning. Um, and here we can now specify uh, the pip file. And we can do that um, by specifying certain tags. The first thing that we need to uh, state here is the source for the packages. And for this, we use two square brackets and we provide the source keyword. And then below it, we provide a URL. In this case, we're going to use the simple PI PI URL. So HTTPS colon slash slash PyPI.python dot org slash simple. This is the default pip source that we have. Then we're going to say verify underscore SSL equals true. And then we're going to say the name is going to be PyPI. PI. So this is just the source where the packages are installed from. And then we can uh, specify now, first of all, which Python version is required, we can specify which packages we want to have. And we can also specify dev packages. So we're going to start with the uh, 
requires keyword here with a requires section also again in square brackets and below we're going to say python underscore version and now we can specify the version in different ways we can say that we want to have an exact version or a more concrete version like 3.9 or we can just provide python 3 which will accept all Python 3 versions. We cannot, however, provide something like greater than 3.2, for example. This does not work to say 3.2 or, uh, or larger. It doesn't work like that. You'd have to provide 3 or a specific version 3.9, but then it's going to use only 3.9. Um, so you have to decide what you need for your project. Um, what else can we do? We can provide now the packages. So we provide this packages section and this is the main thing because in the requirements txt file, remember we had numpy, if we don't want to specify a version, just numpy, otherwise numpy equals equals 1.2, for example. I don't know if that's uh, a version that exists, but here we can do the same thing in a different way. We provide the package, for example, numpy and we provide equals and then a string. And in this string, if we accept any version, we provide an, a star symbol, so an asterisk symbol like this. This basically means the NumPy package needs, needs to be present. It doesn't matter what the version is. Uh, if we provide something like equals equals, I don't know, 1.2. Let's see what, what NumPy version I have installed. Pip freeze. Um, let's go to NumPy. NumPy version 1.22.3. So I can specify that here 1.22.3. And this would require this specific NumPy version. Um, and yeah, we can do a couple of things here. So we can say NumPy any version, pandas any version. We can say pandas dash data reader any version. We can say matplotlib any version. Then we can say something like bitstream, which is my library. I want to have 0.0. .0 12. I think the most recent version is 14. Um, so yeah, this would be the packages. And then we can also specify the dev packages. So we can say dev dash packages for the developers. Maybe you want to do some unit testing. So we're going to say unit test two needs to be present as well. And you can see that this is more sophisticated than just listing packages. You can specify sections, you can specify more things here. And now what we can do is we can go into um, into our command line, we're going to navigate here now to this library. And uh, what we can do is we can lock that file into a fully deterministic log file. So we can say pip env lock to take that file and turn it into a lock file. And then we can use that lock file to recreate the exact same um, environment <clears throat> based on that pip file. So this will take some time. Um, and Basically, we can then once this is done, uh, we have it now here, the pip file lock, you can also see we have it here. And in here, you can see um, everything we have here. So we can see, uh, do we have actually the package names, I think we should have there you go, matplotlib, we have a bunch of hashes to compare against. So everything is taken care of everything is deterministic here. And we can now go ahead and say pip and install. And this will basically take the lock file and install the environment. In this case, now installing dependencies from pip file lock, I can say now pip and shell to get into the environment into the virtual environment that we just created. And now I can say pip freeze. And there you go, you can see all the packages that are installed, you can see more packages than we provided because, for example, Vitstream is based on OpenCV, which is why OpenCV is installed. Um, but yeah, those are the packages based on the pip and uh, not the pip and the pip file dot lock. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. We, we can also say now pip and install dash D to install essentially the dev packages as well. And uh, what we can also do is we can create such a pip file from a requirements file. So <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, we can delete now all of this, we can create a new requirements file. So I can say requirements.txt and I can say numpy pandas, let's say vitstream equals 0 0.0.12. And then I can go into that directory here. Um, now I'm in the environment, let's see deactivate. Okay, it doesn't work like that. Um, I hope it works anyway. So we're going to say pip env install. And basically, if the requirement txt file was a problem here, let me just restart this real quick. 
Okay, so I think I figured out what we need to do. I think we need to say pip env dash dash rm to remove the environment that we already created. And then we can say pip env install. And then it's going to take the requirements txt file and turn it into uh, a pip file. And it's going to fix the Python version that we have already. So that we're using right now. So when we click, when we see the file, where is it? There you go. When the pip file is created, we can see we have the Python version fixed to 3.9. We have the packages from the requirements txt file and we can still adjust it. But this is how you take the requirements file, turn it into a pip file. It also creates a pip file log. You can now change it and create a new pip file log. But this is a professional and modern way to do dependency management in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.